Hello friends, my name is Cody and I look after developer experience here at LaunchDarkly. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how teams that are building Gen AI based applications or integrating Gen AI into their applications can use LaunchDarkly to really accelerate the way they're rolling out new models, the way they're changing prompts, the way they're changing the experience of different users who are consuming AI in their applications and how you can measure the effectiveness of the changes that you're making. AI is changing things extremely fast. New models are coming out often, new ways to interact with prompts are changing the various ways that we interact inside of the things we're building. And you can't be stuck behind a two hour deployment pipeline waiting for the change to go into place. LaunchDarkly is a runtime platform, which means we can make many of these changes live within your code without getting stuck behind that long wait of a deployment or a rollback if things go wrong. Having to wait two hours to take away a bad model that you've implemented or change a prompt that you've integrated isn't going to be a great experience for your users. And so setting yourself up early to be able to iterate often and build quickly is super important. And that's where LaunchDarkly shines the most. And so on the left, I have my application. I'm using Amazon Bedrock in this. I really love their approach because what they do is they act as a broker for other foundational models. And so I have a d bunch of different models that I can use through this common interface, that interface being Bedrock. And so I have this one API that I can use to call a number of different models and switch between for different use cases. Love that approach. And on the right side, I have LaunchDarkly and the different feature flags that are controlling this application. So in this case, I have a prompt that I've ran, give me a five bullet fact list around Roseville. And so Roseville's my hometown, shout out there. And we can see I've gotten a response back. I've got this, was this helpful interface? And so I've got a pretty functional application here. I'm using the Anthropic model from Amazon Bedrock right now. So we're getting Claude V2 returning this information. And that's being controlled through this AI model provider feature flag. So this feature flag is also running an experiment that we'll cover later but it's letting me switch between multiple different models. And so if I go to the variations, we can see those models are available here. I've got the AI 21 model, the Anthropic one, Cohere. And when this feature flag is off, it's using the Anthropic model. But if I was to come in and turn this on, we can see it instantly updates and now I'm using the Cohere model in this case. And so making that change is instant in this case, I did it for everybody in my environment, but I could easily come in and start playing with targeting rules to control who's going to have that. So if I wanted to roll out a specific model for my data scientist team, because we have one that's trained better for that, that's a no brainer. That's easy to do inside the platform. And so iterating on this is something that I can do very often. In this case, I've got these three different models here and I'm specifying them by string flags, but I could bring in all the configuration details here if I wanted to as well and send those into the platform. And this would let me continue to expand the models that are available very easily. Right now I could also come in and just add additional string variations, name them. And if I had them in my code, I would be good to go. Uh, but there's a lot of flexibility here in how we can roll out these new, these new models. And so in this case, I've got the cohere model in place. Uh, this feature flags now on, Going in and changing that around would be as easy as coming in and changing the default settings. But right now, like I said before, we're running a 33% split between multiple different ones because we want to measure the effectiveness of those individual models. More on that in a moment. I have this prompt here as well. The different things are available for me to ask back to my AI. And I've got this AI prompt availability feature flag that's controlling which prompt is available. So by default, we've got the standard research one uh, presented, but I could easily come in, turn this feature flag on, and we'll see the prompt instantly change. And so now I'm getting this code research prompt that I've set up. And if I go in and take a look at the variations menu, we can see these different prompts that are available. So I've got three different prompts, four different prompts uh, that are able to be used. One is that first one we had that gave me a five bullet list, but these prompts are driven by the variations in launch darkly. If I came in and added another one, um, I could expand this very easily without ever having to redeploy. And that's one of the powers here, setting yourself up to continue to iterate. The things you're doing today in AI are almost certainly not going to be the things you're doing in three months, the model you're using, the prompts you're set up. We're going to learn new ways to tune each of those and making sure you have the ability to iterate on them and roll those changes out is going to be important for you being able to keep up the pace and continue to accelerate in, in this space. And so again, doing that at runtime, is one of the best ways to do that. 
What's great about this is I can also get into targeting and start to control who's going to experience these different prompts so I can tune these to different teams. If I had an early access team, I could enable this for them and make sure that only they were getting the new prompt that I developed and we could be measuring against that. I've talked a lot about this idea of being able to being able to measure the effectiveness of that of of prompts and so inside of this model provider one, you saw that call out earlier about experimentation running. I'm running an experiment called LLM conversion functionality. And what that that's looking at is this thumbs up, thumbs down. Are users liking the results they're getting? And so maybe I like most of this, but uh, I feel like the final one, Roswell having a Mediterranean climate is a bit, is a bit weird. So I'm going to say I don't like that one. That's going to send a message back to launch directly an event that's going to correlate into this experiment. So now if I go into the experiment here, I can take a look at the results and I can see the performance of these different models based on what I'm saying. So in this case, uh, I have one for satisfied users and I can see most people are liking my AI 21 model and most people are voting against the cohere model. Now, obviously it's a very small sample size. I've just run this a few times. And so none of this data is very valid at this point, but it's interesting to be able to capture very quickly a user sentiment around these different models. And these are all powered by metrics that we're able to define ourselves using the custom metrics inside of LaunchDarkly. And so I created one for satisfied users, I created one for unsatisfied users, and I'm able to feed that into my application and run it. The final thing I hit on is this idea of being able to enable self-service inside of platforms like beta programs or allowing people to be able to opt in. And so when I look in this menu up here now, I have just a hide model usage, but when I turn this feature on, we can see I get a new med new modal for enable beta model. I can use this to attach a beta segment to different models and allow people to opt in. So if I'm rolling out a brand new model that I'm not ready to test out for everybody, but I want to allow my user base to self-service opt in, I can do that too. And that lets me very quickly start to get feedback on things I might want to test out early. And so in just a few moments here, we've shown how we can iterate live on AI prompt availability, which prompts are available and which one are being served at individual groups. We've shown how we can change models out uh, very frequently and introduce new capabilities into our AI-based applications. We've shown how we can enable self-service uh, adoption of these different platforms, beta programs, roll out new capabilities. And most importantly, we've shown how we can measure the effectiveness of these. That same measurement could be applied to the prompts as well to understand if people like the prompts we're using. Uh, we can measure how fast a result is coming back from, from a provider. The op options are endless in that space. I hope this video helped you understand the different ways that you could build AI using LaunchDarkly. Again, if you're building AI applications, there's really no better platform for doing that in LaunchDarkly because it's gonna let you be able to move very fast, recover quickly if something goes wrong, learn uh, different ways that it's being used inside of your app, as well as iterate on those learnings and introduce new capabilities. I hope you learned something new. If there's anything we can do to help you out, feel free to reach out to us anytime. Have a great one.